Hi, I think we have it because I've got two screens in front of me. Um, so hello everybody, I'm Dr. Deemish Clare. I'm the uh, general practitioner and medical herbalist at Dr. Clare's Apothecary in 9C Road and you have all different ways that you can contact us and I hope you will. So what I'm going to talk about today is um, osteoarthritis and in my clinical lifetime which has lasted more than 21 years um, it has gone from being a localized collagen um, where the it was wear and tear on the sorry the cartilage the wear and tear on the cartilage to being a whole joint um, disease and I, I can now tell you that the current thinking is beginning to think up with a herbal medicine paradigm which is that it is actually a whole body and a whole person um, illness. So it's a systemic illness. Um, and that is always how it's been treated by, by herbal medicine. Um, when we get any illness, we, we always think, why me? It's not fair. Why now? Um, and why are we getting this particular pattern of illness? Um, and the, the causes and the way, way of managing um, uh, why me, why now, and why this illness um, is, is very uh, relevant because we have to treat all of those um, phenomena uh, when we're using a herbal medicine holistic paradigm. Um, so things that affect the onset of why me, why now is age. Clearly, most people who have osteoarthritis are um, in the, the, the senior um, section of society. Um, playing sports, particularly um, uh, weight-bearing, crashing impact, um, running, twisting knees, um, uh, all of that kind of thing. So I'm talking particularly football and rugby here. Um, I don't expect that um, full body wrestling is um, too kind to the joints either. Um, but the, the other big thing that affects it is weight. So the current epidemic of um, the pandemic really of uh, weight um, and the advice that's been given to people by the medical profession over the last 25 years has not been kind to us as a population. Um, so uh, keeping weight off is the best um, strategy because we all know how difficult it is to lose it once we've um, uh, expanded. Uh, hormones, um, this comes home because an awful lot of women have problems that start in and around the menopause. So there's a hormone trigger um, and it relates to the hormone. Um, I call them homeodynamics rather than homeostasis because there isn't much in the body that stays static for two seconds. Um, so when I talk about homeodynamics, I mean the active motion of homeostasis. Um, movement is very important. It links in with obesity, um, but having a full range of flexibility and strong weight-bearing muscles. One of the problems with arthritis is that you use it or lose it. And when you stop using your joints because it hurts, um, then you also lose muscle strength. So you end up with two problems. So it's very important to keep moving. Food is very important. I'll come back to that. Um, I, I was wondering whether I would leave uh, one other factor that anybody who's ever had arthritis will know about, but it's not usually listed because it doesn't seem quite um, respectable or acceptable. So see if you can think of one other factor that definitely affects osteoarthritis, um, but that is uh, never listed really. So I'll come back um, um, at the end. Hopefully I'll remember um, to do that. Um, in, in with all of this, you can't just treat arthritis and ignore the fact that somebody's digestion is absolutely dreadful or their um, menopause is atrocious or that... Um, they have autoimmune disease of other, other functions. Um, that is really not looking at the whole body. And as I said, uh, osteoarthritis is a systemic problem. Um, so uh, evidence-based treatment, um, I'll be covering both because I use herbs um, essentially according to their tradition because to um, my understanding of science as being something that's um, tried and proven to work and then retried and retested, um, especially over time, which would be an empirical science. Um, and then the science of randomized control clinical 
trials or population studies or qualitative studies would be um, the more current paradigm for science. Um, overlapping with osteoarthritis, there are issues to do with uh, vitamin D and osteoporosis, but there um, uh, we, we'll, we'll come back to some of that later, um, but they can interplay with osteoarthritis. Um, it seems now clear that degeneration follows inflammation. So there's no way of treating just the degenerative changes in a joint um, without treating um, inflammation. And the earlier you treat inflammation, the better, the more you avoid joint destruction. As with all things herbal, and anybody who has ever heard me talk on radio or television or read anything I've said, you'll know that the treatment for everything begins with digestion, digestion, digestion. In the same way that your real estate agent will go location, 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 herbalists of every hue, Chinese medicine, Balinese medicine, um, uh, Maoran medicine, uh, First Nations of North America, all, all um, uh, traditional indigenous medicine following on from an oral to a written tradition will treat digestion numero uno, ivora hain even. So, um, so digestion is uh, what we do with what goes in, but herbal medicine goes a step further because we also deal with how we let things out. There's no point in continually going shopping and blocking up your house and never letting anything go back into circulation. Um, so coping with what's being not eliminated uh, is also a concern of herbal medicine. So what goes in? We're looking for the Goldilocks moment. How hard is it to find this Goldilocks moment? What goes in can be too much, too little, um, or just right. I'm sure loads of you have, um, have got it just right, but I've struggled all my life and, I'm, and I know that I'm not the only one. So elimination, problems with elimination happens if we take too much in, if there's excess and it's just too much for the systems to deal with but also if there's no systems there to eliminate it, and that would be toxic um, elements, particularly large molecules where the liver and the kidneys um, are not designed for eliminating such molecules. Um, this is one reason why sweating is very important. Sweat, sweat glands um, can actually excrete some of these larger molecular weight um, toxins, which are increasingly a problem in industrialized countries. Um, when, when this balance of nutrition and, um, uh, and, and elimination isn't right, the body ends up in a state of encumbrance, or should I say the terrain, which is the background matrix or stroma between the cells, the extracellular, what's contained in the extracellular fluid. So the cells are, are wall to wall like this, and there is a, a, a space... Um, they're actually joined at junctions, but there's still a space. And what's in that extracellular fluid in the interstitial space is what gets jammered with encumbrance um, or an altered terrain. And without treating that, you won't actually be able to deal with the systemic condition of osteoarthritis. So you could say that health is inside out um, and that health and a state of Good homeodynamics and a non-encumbered terrain is a cumulative state. So that gives you a good clue as to why, if you're going to manage your arthritis with herbal medicine, it won't be an overnight wonder success. You have to um, create a healthy terrain um, and establish a facility for um, uh, helpful homeodynamics. Um, another way of putting this is that if you want to climb Mount Everest, you'll start at base camp. You'll go to camp one, camp two, camp three before you eat the, and, and I think even camp four before you reach the summit. It's the same with herbal medicine. You do things by increments. So I call it five and 10% medicine. Um, and if you have a chronic condition like osteoarthritis, you give, you, give her osteo, you give herbal medicine at least the number of months as you've had it for years. So if your arthritis started six years ago, don't even think about giving up on herbal medicine um, before six months. And if you're not prepared to do the six months, don't go there at all, because you'll only find that herbal medicine doesn't work, um, whereas, in fact, you need to give it um, a, a chance to work. 
Um, one of my favorite um, uh, stories of beginning in herbal medicine was when I was working in London and I had the opportunity to be taught um, clinical herbal medicine in my practice. And I had one English lady um, who was very stern, um, didn't suffer fools gladly, wasn't a chatterbox by any manner of means, was very direct and to the point. Can you help me? Can you not? And she came to the herbal medicine clinic and uh, said that told her story of how difficult life was with arthritis. And one of the things that particularly struck me was the indignity that she felt having to walk down the stairs backwards every morning, along with all of the other functional things. Because one of the most important outcomes for any treatment is can you do more things on a daily basis than you did before you started. And after about three months, she came quite disgruntled um, and said uh, that she was still in pain and listed all the places that she was in pain. And I said, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, and, you know, how was she getting down the stairs in the morning? And she said, what do you mean? How, how do I get down the stairs in the morning? I said, well, do you go front ways or back ways? And she said, front ways. Like, who would ever go down the stairs backwards? <laughs> and then she remembered and she smiled and she said, oh, right. Yes, I am getting better. Um, and it was also one of the, 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 the people or case histories that made me think, oh my gosh, these herbs really do work <laughs> against my every expectation because I certainly didn't expect them to. I was the usual sceptical doctor. Um, so you might say, how do we use herbs? There's all different kinds of ways of using herbs. The best way is in food. So we'll be telling you the turmeric, the essential fatty acids and all the rest of it, but including among them all the spices. Um, herbal teas, excellent love them go out and pick your nettles pick your 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 um uh gallium aparine your rubbing on the hedge and um, pick all the herbs in your garden your peppermint your lemon balm put them in your teapot loving it all um tinctures tinctures we put they're preserved in alcohol this would be a, a brown bottle of tincture and you take a liquid dose three times a day um the uh, alcohol has two functions it serves as a preservative um and it also extracts some of the constituents that wouldn't be available in a water-based solution. So there's two reasons for using the tincture. Uh, capsules um, are just dried herbs put in a capsule, and people might be surprised at the amount of capsules they're, that they're advised to take. But in reality, um, a capsule of whole herb is that herb dried and powdered. So that's a very small amount of herb. If you imagine your sage in your kitchen cupboard dried, powdered, and put in a capsule. You'd have no trouble taking two capsules or even three capsules. So that just gives you a good idea. Um, and herbs can also be used topically. And I'll be talking about some of those to do with the osteoarthritis. Um, so what herbs am I going to consider today? Um, Devil's Claw has got to be first top on the list. Boswellia, not far after it. Um, fever few, and just... There wasn't much in our herb garden across the road, particularly relevant, but this is feverfew. Um, and it is a Tanacetum vulgari, very, very bitter, very difficult to put that in your tea. I gave it to my sister once and she didn't thank me. Um, this is related to the, some of the constituents that are active are related to non steroidal anti-inflammatories. It's on that, that um, field of um, a class of herbs and, and drugs. Um, silver birch, chamomile, bacoba, horsetail, rose hips, willow bark, celery seeds, red clover, burdock, dandelion root, peppermint, and licorice. So that's one hell of a list, isn't it? So you might think, why on earth has she chosen those ones? Because if I turned those computer screens around, you'd see about 100 herbs in our dispensary behind us, um, along with probably 80 or 90 dried herbs. So if you need any individual herbs, just give us a ring if they're not on the website. We, we have a wide variety. So uh, what I'll do is I'll describe the actions that they're looking for. So if you don't have arthritis, I want you to imagine you have. And if you do have arthritis, I want you to think of what it is that you would like um, to relieve some of the symptoms. So pain relief. And that, those herbs include feverfew, willow bark, devil's claw and boswellia. Anti-flam, um, and that includes devil's claw, boswellia, willow bark, and rosehip, um, and chamomile. 
So we have pain relief and anti-inflammatory. And then we have what we call alterative or eliminative herbs. And I think I've explained why they would be useful. And these are burdock, silver birch, red clover, silver, celery seed and dandelion root. Um, liver support um, to enhance all of the actions of the liver, including um, enzymes uh, producing bile and the flow of bile would be covered by dandelion root. Um, digestive, um, and I told you that's where everything begins, I maybe should have put it at the top of the list, is meadowsweet, chamomile and peppermint. Antispasmodic are uh, boswellia and chamomile. Uh, bile promotion, again, dandelion, uh, devil's claw and chamomile. Any of the bitter herbs will stimulate the bile. Um, sweating is promoted by chamomile and peppermint. And astringency. Um, and astringency is where you want a nice tight seal between all those cells in the gut. So you, you want to, you don't want any laxness um, that large molecules can get in. Because if you stop them getting in in the first place, that's the best way to prevent having to eliminate them um, by sitting in a sauna or going for a jog. Um, uh, we also have uh, lymphatic actions um, as part of the elimination, which is red clover and devil's claw, diuretic actions, which are silver birch, chamomile, devil's claw, and horsetail, relaxing benefits, which would be chamomile, and hormone balance, um, which is offered by red clover and indirectly um, by the um, uh, action of bile salts. Um, this would be helped by dandelion. So that's a lot to digest, isn't it? Should we take a pause for a moment? Um, so we don't have one anti-inflammatory effect. We don't have just a digestion effect. Um, we have astringency within the digestion. The antispasmodic um, also works within the digestive tract. So one of the big advantages of herbs is that they are hetero they have heterogeneous effects. So they have small effects on lots of different systems. And then you take all the different herbs and they interact by either an additive action or a synergistic action. So it, it all flows. Um, so the other thing we need to do to clear the joint space is to move the muscles around it um, because that helps with clearing the fluid systems within the joint but it also supports the joint. And if you lose that support, any um, pain or irritation or inflammation will be worse. So although it hurts, um, even if it hurts, put the ice pack on, pack on afterwards. And um, it's very, very important to keep the mobility there. Um, I've done... Uh, I don't know if this will come up. This is my um, key of smiley face which is just it to show that all of those arrows indicate different actions so that in the end, my patients end up with a smiley face or a smiley or a face. Herbs aren't, have limitations, um, but they have a lot of cool actions. Okay, so uh, I'll talk about one particular herb, which is turmeric. Um, which is flavor of the month. In the 21 years I've been practicing herbal medicine, I've seen lots of different herbs go in and out of being flavor of the month. But I must say turmeric is one of the ones that um, very much uh, um, earns its keep. Um, it in enhances wound healing. It's anti-inflammatory. It has very an strong antioxidant um, and radical mop-up um, uh, operation going on. It is, it's got an anti-cancer effect by three different actions. Um, it has an effect on gene expression and on the spread of cancer in a local area, cell to cell, and an anti-new um, blood vessel. One of the, the, the reasons why the um, cancer cells can run amok is that the tissue creates new blood cells, um, which are very greedy and, sell, and really um, supply the... Uh, cancer cells at the expense of the rest of the body. Um, turmeric is antimicrobial and it has an effect on viruses, bacteria and fungi. Good all-rounder. Um, neuroprotector, which is one of the reasons why it's implicated in preventing um, Alzheimer's. It supports the immune function. 
um, and it enhances wound healing. So in times of COVID, guys, I suggest you get your jar of turmeric and put it in just about everything. <laughs> Anytime you make soup, saute onions, make an omelette, make a casserole, um, anything at all, I um, urge you to put the turmeric in by the teaspoon. Don't be shy. The average amount in Asia is six teaspoons a day. Um, so anything up to that, you're, you're, you're going well. There's a theoretical problem or concern with biliary um, disease. Um, so if you have any, any uh, inflammation of the bile ducts, um, probably seek, seek medical advice. So I've told you that the reasons why I use these herbs is primarily traditional. Um, but I will also, I, I, I'm glad to be able to offer uh, research evidence for um, some of these herbs as well. Um, several studies on white willow show um, uh, demonstrate efficacy in um, osteoarthritis versus placebo. Um, it's very important to note that this is the whole herb. It's not just the salicin in the herb um, because the salicin works with, with other um, constituents, even within willow, so that you might have 224 milligrams of salicin, which normally wouldn't be enough of a salicylate to um, uh, cause pain relief, um, and yet it does. So they um, have realized, and they are realizing more and more, that it's keeping the whole herb together in the proportions in the whole herb that are actually um, valuable. Um, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, and it's also interesting to note that the difference between the natural salicylin and the um, acetyl salicylic acid in aspirin or, or the related non-steroidals, um, it, it's the, these acetyl groups and other formulations in non-steroidals that actually cause the stomach damage and most of the other um, unwanted effects of, um, of the medication. Um, for those of you in the research know-how, um, there is a lot of kudos to um, Cochrane Reviews. Cochrane Reviews are independent reviewers. Um, and they, 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 uh, they're systematic reviews, which means that there's, there's three people who adjudicate the, the assessment. Um, uh, it has its limitations. As I said, everything has its limitations. Um, but the 2014 Cochrane Review on herbs for osteoarthritis showed that Boswellia has a 17% absolute improvement in pain management. 17%, that's not to be sneezed at. And the physical function has an 8% absolute improvement. Um, so that could make the difference between being able to open your tin of soup or not. Um, so, or being able to comb your hair, for instance. Um, uh, so the, another Cochrane report in 2004 um, showed that devil's claw relieves pain more than placebo and indeed more than 7.5 milligrams of Biox. Dreaded word, Biox. Um, and willow pain, willow bark relieves pain more than placebo and of equal effect with 12.5 milligrams of Vioxx. Um, why the dreaded word Vioxx? Vioxx has a non steroidal anti inflammatory which was taken from the market. Um, and the, the, there's debate about how many deaths it cause, caused. Um, the, the one that seems to be most credible is about 60,000 cardiac deaths um, as an unwanted effect. Now, th things happen. The, the, the real um, offense is that this was continued to be sold even after there was a good indication that these cardiac problems were being caused. Um, so it, it's... When, when you look at the benefit of Devil's Claw, Willow Bark and Boswellia and you look at the paucity of what's in my doctor's bag um, that's not going to worry me, cause harm to the patient, um, worry the patient uh, and it's all on the patient leaflet. Um, so I, I don't understand the resistance to herbal medicine um, as a valid form of whole systematic medicine. And it's when I read, read research like this that it, it, it doesn't 
fail to um, uh, cause concern, really. Um, yeah, when I think of all the people who are being exposed to medication. One of the studies of Devil's Claw did actually show and demonstrate that people um, were able to reduce their non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. And in an independent study I did in my, um, in my practice in London, um, not specifically about arthritis, but over and above for all the patients who attended the herbal clinic in conjunction with my medical practice um, and side by side and integrated, um, the people who attended the herbal clinic had reduced their medication. Um, I won't say significantly because it wasn't a big enough study trial, but it was certainly a notable change. Um, it's also uh, interesting to note that Boswellia also has uh, clinical evidence of effectiveness in asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, and collagenous colitis. And that, again, gives you the indication that herbal medicine treats the whole body. It, it treats the background terrain of inflammation wherever it is in the body. Um, and the side effects in all of the studies, including the Cochrane Reviews, report um, very low incidence of adverse effects, um, a withdrawal from studies due to adverse effects in keeping with the, the placebo arm of the trial. Um, I've looked deeply into um, drug interactions with over-the-counter um, medication, and there's very little concern. If you are on medication, please, 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 please um, explain to your doctor, your pharmacist, your consultant, and um, what herbs or other supplements that you're taking. Um, that really is another very important message. Um, the other thing about just NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories in general, is that uh, uh, 16,000 deaths occur every year in the US um, on account of um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory side effects, severe, and that doesn't include severe side effects that people recover from. So let's go on to more cheerful things. Um, you may have heard of farmers down the country um, uh, whipping themselves with nettles, um, particularly at harvest time, where they, they have a long day, a lot of work to do, and they don't have time to really be um, entertaining the pain in their wrists or their ankles or their hips um, and they really have to just get the job done. Um, a very nice clinical trial um, showed that uh, this was effective <laughs> for uh, the base of the thumb. So they'd grip the base of their thumb with nettles. I, I, I pretend the fever fuse the nettles. So they would do this and they get a big red wheel and that would bring a whole load of blood supply to the area, which would take away any noxious irritants um, and increase the blood supply and increase the function temporarily. Um, nobody's done a long -term trial to show if that actually improves the function over a period of time. So that's what they did down the country and weren't they the wise ones? Um, I'll just mention a few things about, about food. Um, essential fatty acids, um, which are uh, oily fish, nuts and seeds, and avocados. Um, when I say nuts and seeds, I mean two or three teaspoons a day, um, particularly if you're weight um, uh, conscious. Um, if you're trying to put on weight, it's a very good way of putting on weight to eat more nuts and seeds. Um, but the requirements are for two or three, two to three teaspoons a day. Um, now, the other thing with, with any chronic disease is that it's important to treat who is complaining of this pain and limited function. Um, I don't know anybody who suffers chronic pain who doesn't get uh, low mood, irritable. Um, the nicest of people with the smiliest constitutions, they will have their bad days. So it's very important to treat um, mood, sleep. Um, even people who report good sleep, if they have significant osteoarthritis, they're often having what are called micro awakenings, where they, when they go to turn over, the pain um, wakes them more than somebody who doesn't have um, joint pain. Um, so promoting a good sleep, healthy sleep is good. Managing weight. Um, I'll tell you what I know about managing weight, and you either won't believe me um, or you won't want to do it or 
um, you agree with both of those things, but you won't do it anyway. I don't know anybody. Nobody has come back to me yet and said that they'll do it. And I know why. <laughs> because it's difficult. <laughs> um, it, but, but less difficult than what people are doing now, which is going on rapid weight release diets um, and then yo-yoing, putting on extra weight. And over three years, they've actually put on four or five pounds. So this works better. It's not as painful, um, but the trick is no more than one pound a month weight loss, which is 12 pounds a year, 24 pounds in two years, um, and you keep your sanity. Um, no, eat off a seven inch blue plate, uh, and a plate which is midway between a side plate and a dinner plate. Um, the fuller your plate looks, the, the more full you feel at the end of the meal. I know, mad, isn't it? But you know, which of us, which of us are entirely sane? <laughs> um, don't get on the weighing scales. If you want to see how you're doing, measure your waist. It's actually the best, um, the best measure that there is. Um, I always treat adrenal stress. Again, I don't know anybody in, in chronic pain who doesn't have adrenal stress. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I use licorice. Um, there's, two kinds of, there's two kinds of power. There's willpower and won't power. Um, and the trouble is we vacillate between the two. There's a very good um, uh, Google talk by Kelly McGonigal. And she is, uh, uh, she uh, talks about all of the, the evidence behind willpower. Willpower is a fairly useless tool to depend on for weight loss. Um, and interestingly enough, the, the, the conclusion at the end of it is that self-kindness, self-regard um, is actually consistently better um, and reward system but she does a 20 minute um, YouTube uh, video Google talk and it's Kelly Meg Gonigal. Um, you might find it useful um, I always suggest people with vitamin D have a vitamin D test done or um, take a vitamin D supplement if that's not available very very few people have too much vitamin D most of us are deficient um, and the European guidelines are 2,000 units a day. And the reason for this is that um, vitamin D deficiency and osteoarthritis have overlapping symptoms. And uh, vitamin D deficiency can contribute to falls. Um, and arthritis leaves you prone to falls. So you're adding things up. Um, one way of getting vitamin D in food is to add dandelion flowers to your salads. Just a little bit of dandelion flowers. Um, vegetables are important. Um, uh, seven to nine per day between vegetables and fruit. Fruit is nature's candy. You're definitely wanting more vegetables than fruit and more above ground vegetables than below ground vegetables and a rainbow of colors. There you go. You've got it all. Um, lots of spices, cayenne pepper, turmeric, um, celery seeds, nigella seeds, paprika, ginger, um, and two teas that I would add to my list are green tea and ginger tea. Very, very helpful. Okay. Oh, and organic food, if possible. Organic food, you're not paying for what's in it, you're paying for what's not in it. So you're paying for what's in it is organic manure, um, and what's not in it is um, uh, fungicides and herbicides. Um, if you're not having organic, um, and that's it's not an expectation you just do your best um, make sure you wash fruit and vegetables um, and wash your hands after peeling oranges all that waxy stuff and the, use a, a, a scraper for the apples you know those very waxy ones um, you really want to get all that off um, but do eat the skins that's where you get the fibre so I think oh I'll show you what we have see I'm terrible all of the anything that I've talked about all those herbs are available in a variety of forms I didn't talk about topical um this is a comfrey leaf it's a pity it's not in flower um it's rough hairy very unpleasant to garden lovely to look at it's a big stand as high as the table um with drop bells um very very nice um and this makes a very good ointment um, you don't use this inter internally because it contains pyrolidazine alkaloids. I'm only telling you that's so that I look intelligent. Um, but they are toxic to the liver. If you eat bushels of them, um, you really have to eat a lot to get uh, harm to the liver. But nonetheless, um, 
So this uke is made into a bam, and our very own Annie Dillon makes this um, uh, bam. I don't have it here for some reason. Um, but we also have a joint cream where we add essential oils um, and a warming ointment. And that's also very good for people with brain oils. But the main things are um, the uh, blend of muscular joint um, uh, tinctures um, and teas, which are the anti flam teas. Um, and do we have one of the tea sachets? Um, I'll show you what we very cleverly do. We put three teaspoons of tea into one sachet. So it's like a, a, a mega tea bag. It's three teaspoons in one. Um, so although you only get 14 tea sachets, it's the equivalent of 42 tea bags. And what you do is this is loaded with herbs in and seal the bag. And then you put it into your container or your teapot um, or your flask and you pour anything from that amount of water to a whole um, a large flask full. Um, you can then, if, you, if it's cold, you can add water to warm it up um, and you drink it throughout the day. And the reason why I did that was after about 15 years here, I love people using teas, but the compliance that I was getting was absolutely rubbish. And I know why. It's a hassle to be emptying out tea bags and filling little sachets and clipping things and so I thought, what do you do to make life easier for people? You make life easier for people. So that's what we've done. It is a bit more expensive. We do still have the loose teas. So feel free. I've made every option available to people. Um, but I can tell you the um, compliance rate. It's still less expensive than tinctures, um, which is very important, especially for something if I'm saying use something for six months. Um, if you use the anti flam tea every day, that will give you, it might take you nine months but it's very, it's very affordable. Um, so the, that's the anti flam tea, the muscular joint, and then we have anti flam capsules, um, which you can use these according as you need them. Um, for, sometimes people use these just for flare-ups of pain. Oh, do you remember I said I'd come back to the, your quiz as to what's the other thing that affects arthritis that you hardly ever see written in textbooks. It's just not respectable enough and it, it doesn't look scientific enough but it's the weather. Um, so the weather um, makes a big difference. People can tell the weather according to their joints. Um, now, Tara, we're having difficulty with yeah, playing that video. Yeah. It's just come back. It'll come back. Okay. Um, so the uh, capsules are willow bark, contain willow bark, boswellia, cramp bark. Cramp bark is for muscle spasm. And devil's claw so you can see how how useful um, they are and we also have turmeric capsules um, here and this is just dried turmeric we haven't super concentrated them standardized them done anything clever which means that they can be patented and um, uh, and sold at a premium that's just pure um, turmeric we also have loose turmeric um, which is uh, very good um, what I love is the um, lavender or rose um, uh, Epsom salts baths. Um, very, 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 very nice. Um, which brings me to, un unless you can't get in and out of the bath because of your arthritis, but that brings me to treat early, prevent destruction. Treat early, prevent destruction. It's cheaper in the long run. If you do all the suggestions that I've, that I've told you, and you're at the early part of arthritis with the genetic tendency um, and all the signs don't all go well, treat it now. Um, cut out the sugar was the very important thing that I forgot to mention with all those positive things. What not to do is eat sugar. It's easy, isn't it? <laughs> okay, um, questions. Question eight. Uh, is it okay to add boiling water to tinctures um, and is it okay to drive afterwards? Um, yes, you can boil, add boiling water to tinctures. Some people do it because they are particularly sensitive to alcohol. Now, there really is a very, very small amount of um, alcohol in a teaspoon of tincture, um, but some people prefer to do that. Um, if they have very sensitive digestion to alcohol, sometimes they find that useful as well. Um, is it okay to drive afterwards? 
yes, you won't get away with um, a drink driving charge because you were taking a tincture. There's as much um, alcohol in a ripe banana as there is in five mils of tincture. Um, so don't drink the whole bottle. Um, you mentioned something called heart problems, uh, uh, Vioxx. Um, but they now consider that they probably all non-steroidals have um, a, a mild uh, unwanted effect on heart function. But the Vioxx um, one was just particularly marked and caused a lot about a lot of deaths. Um, treatment for a calf tear. Mm, see a physio. Um, yeah, definitely see a physio. Um, if it's a question of um, uh, deep mus muscle damage, you can, of course, use um, the Comfrey Balm. Um, and also you can use any of the anti-inflammatory um, the anti-inflammatory capsules. You could use the musculo joint, um, but it probably needs uh, uh, physiotherapy as well. Um, but all of these things that treat inflammation and keep your homeodynamic homeostasis clear would also have a benefit. Um, so yeah, can we overdo it with herbs? Do you know, it's very hard to, but of course we can. Um, the reason why uh, the pyrolidazine alkaloids became a problem um, was because a woman was eating them as a food um, and she was eating kilos every week and she caused um, uh, hepatic failure. Um, keeping to the doses advised um, is traditionally been used. We've been aware of herb drug interactions and we've been aware of unwanted effects of, of herbs. Unwanted herb drug interactions have been a big focus over the last 20 one to 25 years and even with that focus and attention and people actually doing studies there remains very few herbs um mainly uh one of the primary ones being st john's wort because they see the herbs and the drugs use the same enzymes um but several other drugs um, and it can can be problematic if they have a narrow therapeutic index um um Pyrolizine alkaloids can be a problem in some herbs, um, like butterbur. Uh, but so the, the ones that are in food, you can be very confident um, of not overdoing. And um, we have a taste, like I can't imagine over, anybody overdoing sage or thyme um, or any of the pungent herbs, the, carmine, the, the chamomile. You see, we have an inbuilt, the nettle, as soon as we build up our iron, we seem to kind of go off nettles. So at some stage, there's a trust in our body. They're, they're used in doses of herb teas. Um, so it's not impossible, but if you eat a barrel of apples, boy, you'll be awful sick. If you drink too much water, you can kill yourself. Um, and uh, so it's it, everything has a relative risk, but herbs are on the very safe edge of relative risk. Fennel tea good for arthritis? It is indirectly because it's good for the digestion. Um, it's an alternative to Nurofen. I would certainly try the anti-flam capsules um, and see if using those you can um, reduce your use of Nurofen. Um, I, I'm, I'm not anti-pharmacy um, and I'm certainly, I have a fairly high pain threshold, but um, I wouldn't like to be in agony for the want of a paracetamol or a neurofin. Um, it's when you need to use them long term. So for an acute fracture where it's only for a few weeks at a time, take them with food, use the anti flam because they have other healing properties. Um, as I said, the turmeric has wound healing, um, anti-inflammatory, anti-spasmodic. So it will also help re reduce the muscle spasm, which because it's been, been treated um, will also be a problem. How to stop flooding on anti-inflammatory? Um, Michelle on Facebook asked that question. I don't really understand mm. the context of it, but I'm sure. I think maybe she means not taking too many anti-inflammatories at one time. Maybe. Okay. Oh, definitely don't do that. Yeah. No. Maybe you can let us know, Michelle. I think that's it, is it? And there's one there from you too, one there. from Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Okay, um, recommendations for rheumatoid arthritis on methotrexate. Methotrexate is a chemotherapy drug um, and 
really, you, you need to see a medical herbalist. Um, anybody on um, chemotherapy or the autoimmune biologics, um, any of those things, it's, it's an autoimmune disease is, it, it's not a joint disease. So I would treat rheumatoid arthritis in the same way as I would ulcerative colitis or psoriasis or whatever. Again, in the same way that osteoarthritis is a systemic condition, the autoimmune conditions are more clearly um, systemic conditions, but they're actually a condition of the immune system, not the joints or not the gut. So it, it's, a, it's a completely different um, ballpark. Um, so a area can be more helpful. Well, I hope that is helpful, actually, um, letting people know that autoimmune condition is not a condition of the organ affected is actually really useful. Yeah. There you go. You can email support at drclare.net. Um, I've completely lost the screen. Is that? Yeah, so YouTube is going, but oh, okay. some recent Facebook has frozen. Okay. But, um, we have one in particular, and some people want to come on YouTube to share with Ms. Morgan on Facebook. So we're sorry about oh. that. We don't know your name. You found us. Well done. Yeah. Are we done? That's all the questions. Yeah. That's all the questions. Okay. Um, I can't see you, but I'm sure you've been a great audience. <laughs> It's good to talk. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with us. Thanks for sticking with us. Okay. All the best, everybody. Uh, go out and enjoy the nice evening and take care of yourselves. Bye now.